time so it's time for story time again so i hope you have your pajamas on you brushed your teeth and you're in your bed snuggled under your your bedding and your covers so i'm going to read you a story now enjoy it and remember after we are done it's time for sleep here we go the magic porridge pot this is the story of an old porridge pot one day just before Christmas, a poor old farmer and his wife decided that they need to sell their last cow as they had no money left and no food in the cupboards. As the farmer walked slowly and sadly to the market with his cow, he met a very strange little man on the road. He had a long white beard right down to his toes, which were bare and he wore a huge black hat, under which the farmer could only just see the bright gleam of his eyes. Over his arm he carried a battered old porridge pot. That is a nice looking cow, said the strange little man. Is she for sale? Yes, said the farmer. I shall buy your cow, declared the strange little man putting the porridge pot down with a thump. I shall give you this porridge pot in exchange for your cow. Well, the farmer looked at the battered old porridge pot and he looked at his fine cow and he was just about to say Certainly not. When a voice whispered, Take me! Take me! The farmer shook himself. Dear me, it was bad enough to be poor but now hearing strange voices. He opened his mouth again to say, Certainly not. When he heard the voice again, Take me! Take me! Well, he saw at once that it must be the magic pot, and he knew you didn't hang about with magic pots. So he said very quickly to the strange little man, Certainly. And handed over the cow. He bent down to pick up the pot, and when he looked up, the strange little man had vanished into thin air. The farmer knew he was going to have a difficult time explaining to his wife just how he had come to part with the precious cow for an old porridge pot. She was very angry indeed and had started to say a lot of very cross things when a voice came from the pot. Take me inside and clean me and polish me, and you shall see what you shall see. Well, the farmer's wife was astonished, but she did as she was bid. She washed the pot inside and out, and then she polished it until it had a bright shine as a new pin. No sooner had she finished than the pot hopped off the table and straight out of the door. The farmer and his wife sat down by the fire, not saying a word to each other. They had no money, no cow, no food, and now it seemed they didn't even have their magic pot anymore. Down the road from the poor farmer, there lived a rich man. He was a selfish man who spent all his time eating huge meals and counting his money. He had lots of servants, including a cook who was in the kitchen making a Christmas pudding. The pudding was stuffed with plums, currants, sultanas, almonds and goodness knows what else. It was so big that the cook realized she didn't have a pot to boil it in. It was at this point that the porridge pot trotted in the door. Goodness me, she exclaimed. The fairy must have seen the spot just in time to take my pudding. And she dropped the pudding in the pot. No sooner had the pudding fallen to the bottom with a very satisfying thud than the pot skipped out of the door. The cook gave a great shriek. By the time that the butler and the footman and the parlour maid and the boy who turned the spit had all dashed into the kitchen, the pot was out of sight. 
The porridge pot, in the meantime, trotted down the road to the poor farmer's house. He and his wife were delighted to see the pot again, and even more pleased when they discovered the wonderful pudding. The wife boiled it up and it lasted them for three days. So they had a good Christmas after all, while the old porridge pot sat quietly by the fire. Spring came, and still the porridge pot sat quietly by the fire. Then one day the pot suddenly trotted over to the farmer's wife and said, Clean me, polish me, and you shall see what you shall see. So the farmer's wife polished the pot till it shone as bright as a new pin. No sooner than she finished, the pot hopped off the table and straight out of the door. You will remember that the rich man was very fond of counting his money. There he sat in the great hall with piles of golden guineas and silver sixpences on the table and great bulging bags of coins on the floor at his feet. He was wondering where he could hide all the money when the pot trotted in. Now the cook had been far too frightened of the rich man's temper to tell him about the pot stealing the Christmas pudding. So when he saw the pot, he was delighted. Goodness me! He exclaimed. The fairies must have seen this pot just in time to take my money. And he dropped several bags of money in the pot. No sooner that the bags have fallen to the bottom than the, than, sorry, than the pot skipped out of the door again. The rich man shouted and hollered, but by the time that the coachman and the head groom and the stable boy had run into the great hall, the pot was out of sight. He trotted down the road to the poor farmer's house. He and his wife were delighted to see the pot again, and even more pleased when they discovered the bags of gold and silver. There was enough money to last them for the rest of their life, and even after they had bought a new cow. As for the battered old porridge pot, it sat quietly by the fire for many a long year. Then, one day, it suddenly trotted straight out of the door. It went off up the road until it was out of sight, and the farmer and his wife never saw it again wow can you imagine having a pot like that and you can tell him i want sweets and then it will go and get you sweets or i want the playstation it will get you playstation let's go and dream about what we want that pot to bring us if this pot was real okay guys so it's time to sleep but before we sleep like the video and share it with your friends Okay, now it's time to close your eyes and let's dream about the spot and what we want it to bring us. Good night.